Humans are part of nature, but humans have become disconnected from nature. And I truly feel that the only way that humanity will come back to save the planet is by connecting to themselves. When they connect to themselves, they can realize they are part of nature and they can reconnect back to nature. There are marvels to be discovered within our very own coastal waters that we are only just beginning to understand. Every one of us carries a spark within us to bring good to the world around you. Sometimes it just hits you. For others, it's a life dream. My purpose is to leave the world a better place for our future generation. In my lifetime, the common bumblebee has gone from being prolific in every garden to being endangered. That's hard to even conceive, but it's true. When I'm around bees, I feel responsibility towards them, to sustain them, to sustain our mother earth. A lot of people, they don't know the importance of peace and what they contribute to our food system, to our industry, and to our mother earth. Bees are a very smart creature, very important creature, and it really contributes to the whole ecosystem of the earth. The problem is that people are ignorant about the, the importance of this creature. If we talk about the, the bees' importance to our ecosystem and agriculture, two out of three bites of food we eat is are pollinated by bees. So imagine our food security on this planet. There is no life on Earth without bees. The life will stop after four years if the bees disappear. It's that vital for our life to continue. We need to sustain the bees. Our responsibility as human, we need to save them. We need to take care of them. We need to create that healthy environment for the bees to survive and sustain. We signed an agreement with the Emirates Environment Group to build this ecosystem, a full cycle. So for each one ton of recyclable items collected. The AEG contribute one cedar tree, and this cedar tree are planted in my bee reserve. It is a good initiative, but my aim is to focus on the future generation, the young generations. We are inviting schools, colleges, to come and be part of this program. We need to involve the whole community and educate them to be responsible towards our environment and towards this beautiful creature. Now, if we talk about how each one of us can be part of this program, is planting trees, the right trees, and the right plants for the bees, stop using pesticides. Also, you can adapt a hive. If you adapt a hive, you become an ambassador of bees. This is what I call myself, and always an ambassador of bees. The bees needs to be part of our strategies, not only in the government, but each household need to save and contribute to the apiculture industry in the world. Most people find it hard to believe, but I live and work in a fully net zero development. I also live in the sustainable city, the first community of its type in Dubai. We have 11 biodome greenhouses and a 10 megawatt peak solar production. And it was built to prove the idea that a wholly sustainable community is possible. So I've been a practicing landscape architect for the last 16 years here in Dubai. And over those years, I've really developed a passion for what I call a productive landscape. So a landscape that doesn't just look beautiful, but serves a purpose for growing food, creating habitat, creating shade and microclimates. 
In 2019, I joined Expo 2020. And Expo 2020, of course, is um, the most amazing place and it has a very strong focus on sustainability. It's one of its key principles there. So it's always been a dream of mine to try and live off of one of the landscapes that I've created. Coming into my 50th year, I decided to set myself a challenge, which I call the Sustainable Human Project. The Sustainable Human Project is about eating from one of the landscapes that I have designed and implemented for one whole entire year. Essentially, it's around food that I grow or trade for with my neighbors within the neighborhood that I live in. So um, it's been just a fantastic learning process. And when you look at the three pillars of sustainability, social, economic, and environmental, it's really something that I've learned that you have to have all three of those in balance for a project to work. So, so far I've been doing really well, but for things that I can't grow, I've implemented a barter system. So like the old days with my neighbors. So what I do is I take recycled wood from the community and I create carpentry works, usually things around urban farming that I trade with my neighbors. One of the great things about this is that it brings me back to thinking about how our grandfathers might have lived. So you have to set up a system with whoever you want to trade with and you have to really stick to your word. So you have to make sure that both parties are happy with what you're going to trade. And then if you commit to making that trade, both parties have to come together. So in a situation where I'm in, where I rely on these trades for food, it's really important. And that makes me think back to the days where um, people had to stick to their word and their word was so important because if you didn't, very important things like your food, your shelter would fall through. The Desert Farming Project at Expo 2020 is, I think, a game changer. It is focused on growing plants with three things that are in abundance in the UAE, which is sun, sand, and salt water. So it's taking these three things and combining them in a very simple system to be able to grow plants with salt water. And that is an absolute revolutionary thing. You can imagine by using this product, we are doing two things. We're growing food and we're also helping to save our oceans. I've always been intrigued by the sea, and when I started to dive, my curiosity only intensified. One of my very fond childhood memories were of uh, when me and my grandfather would walk together down to the beach uh, where he would fish and I would sit and watch him as a child. Uh, it's one of the most beautiful memories I have of my childhood with him and growing up with him. Becoming a marine biologist isn't the easiest path you might take. When I first started, it was possible to count the number of women in this field on one's fingertips. But today, more and more women are involved. If I told you dolphins are excessively talkative creatures, you might laugh. Yet, dolphins not only whistle and click, they also emit loud broadband packets of sound, called burst pulse sounds, to discipline their young and chase away sharks. Our research involves gathering data on dolphin acoustics using hydrophones, some of the first of its kind in the UAE. You may not always see dolphins in the summer, but you can definitely hear them and you can understand how they speak. The more data that we have, the more we'll be able to understand how deeply dolphins are embedded in a really complex social network, way more so than humans. Initiatives such as the Hamur House are extremely important. Uh, they're a way to connect both art with science and a way for the general public to understand what we as scientists work on. But it's also a way to connect to the youth and the younger generation. My passion and my love for the ocean and marine life started from a very young age. Um, these values were instilled within me through my grandfather. So I believe that it's very important to focus on the youth and the younger generation 
um, and to make sure that these values and ideas and, and, and the importance of marine life and marine ecosystem is passed on to the younger generation uh, because they are the ones that are going to be taking over from the work we do and, and it is very important for them to understand the, the significance and the need to protect what we have. The sea has no borders and our biodiversity is shared among the region. So it's not a single country's role or a city's role to protect it. It's a regional and global responsibility. This experience has been transformative for me. I've learned so much about so many different things, but specifically, I think what I've learned about is the connection with people. I did really think at the beginning that this would be a, a gardening project or an environmental project, but it's become so much more and so much more of a social project. And for me, as an individual, Sometimes we think that the things we do can't make a big difference, it can't make a big change. The, the problems that the world are facing are too great. But I do now feel that action is the only way forward. So by taking personal action, these things actually do make a difference and make a change. I want to deliver one message here. We need to act today. Not tomorrow, not the day after. The bee's survival and our survival depends on how we act today. My aim is to see that the number of bees is increasing. Each one of us act responsible toward the bees. They are friendly and they are really important and vital for our life, for our mother nature. The bees are such an important part of any gardener's life as they pollinate the plants. And amazingly enough, at Terra, which is a sustainability pavilion at Expo, during the construction, there was a colony of bees that was found in the rebar. Um, those bees were relocated to a beekeeper's hive here in Dubai. So over the last three years, those bees have gone from one colony to about 10 colonies. The more connected I am with the ocean, the more human I become, the more sensitive and the more self-aware. Because at the end of the day, the ocean really doesn't need us as humans, but we need the ocean to survive. The world we live in, it's all part of a remarkable active ecosystem. It's living, vibrant and interconnected, and we're a part of it, yet we barely notice it. My hope is for the next generation to be connected with nature and to be one with nature and to really appreciate nature and what it gives to us as humans.